Good morning. My name is Serena and I'm the nurse unit manager here at Wandi Narita. I'm a mother, a daughter, a sister, a partner, and a woman who has fully recovered from an eating disorder. And this was something that I actually didn't think to be possible, but I know now that it is so very, very attainable. There's seldom an exact start date to an eating disorder. However, there's often um, moments that play key roles in the development of one. That for me was at age 10, when I went on my first diet. I learned how to weigh myself and how to measure my body's circumference. I learned the Weight Watchers scoring system and I kept a very accurate record of my daily intake in a little blue book. However, when most diets would have usually lost momentum, mine certainly didn't. Instead, it ran full steam ahead into a fixation on body, weight, shape and size. This fixation provided an illusion of control. It was something I felt I had little of in other areas of my life. When I was 13, my dad walked out on our family. This ended a childhood of exposure to domestic violence. The feelings of control I felt through engaging in rigid rules surrounding food and intake provided an avenue of distraction from the memories of that childhood. And although this sense of control at first felt like a lifesaver, it really ended up being a nightmare. At age 14, I made myself vomit for the first time. The years of restriction of intake and the sense of guilt surrounding eating had reached a tipping point. I remember that first occasion vividly. I remember staring into the toilet bowl in disbelief. I remember the sense of awareness that what I was doing would not be considered normal or okay to other people, that what I was doing wasn't normal or okay to me, but that what I was doing I didn't really have control of. Somehow what I was doing had control of me. That thing I believed gave me a sense of control was in control of me. It's an incredibly difficult place to be in, both loving something and hating it, feeling both in control and out of control. Wanting to scream desperately for help, but also needing to remain so secretly silent at all costs. That is the complex nature of an eating disorder. It is both possible to cry for help and run the opposite direction at the same time. It feels nothing short of a war that you fight against yourself day in and day out. There's a side of you that longs to be free versus a side that only knows and trusts its rigidity and rules. After six more years living within this nightmare, at age 19, I allowed the screens for help to overpower the silent secrecy. I told my mum that I had bulimia. I told her that I had been making myself sick daily for years. I told her about the torturous battle that was ever consuming my mind for nearly a decade. And I asked for help. We looked, we looked, and then we looked some more. Days, weeks, and months passed by, um, just trying to find an avenue of help. Google showed up some recovery ranches in the States, some facilities in Europe, but like many, these were financially um, and practically unattainable to me. I thought that I had been brave. I thought that I'd done the right thing, telling my mum, asking for help. 
I thought that if I spoke up, help would be there. So when a couple of months had passed and I had found nothing, when I realised that Australia doesn't have residential eating disorder facilities, that I might indefinitely be stuck with this eating disorder, I gave up. I gave up looking and I gave up living. I overdosed on medication and spent three days in the intensive care unit, followed by months in and out of public mental health wards. There were glimmers of hope along the way. During this time, I remember a nurse who laid her hand on my arm as I was wheeled in on a stretcher. She said to me that she had been where I was and that it can get better. And I clung to that. However, on a whole, general mental health wards were incredibly inequipped to treat eating disorders. At one facility, they didn't notice that I hadn't eaten a single meal in the first 14 days of my admission. In another, I was grabbed by my clothes and pulled to the isolation room after being found vomiting post-meal. They were doing this while telling me how disgusting it was. I then spent every meal after that in the isolation room so that they could monitor my behaviour. They did what they thought to be best. They did what their lack of knowledge allowed them to do. But it's time for that lack of knowledge to end. It's time for effective treatment to options to become available. It's time for Wandy Narita. It's time for 10 Wandy Narritas. It's time for recovery to become a reality for more Australians. Finally, seven months after searching for help, I found an amazing psychologist. She specialised in eating disorders and she referred me to an inpatient eating disorder ward. There I spent an intensive two months of refeeding and therapy, followed by um, months of follow-up psychology sessions and dietetic reviews. I continued to see them for many years. I relapsed once, but then I fully recovered. While I was unwell, I couldn't actually imagine being fully recovered. It honestly seemed unattainable, impossible. I could barely remember what it was like to live without an eating disorder. After all, I hadn't experienced that freedom since childhood. But once I got there, once I found freedom, I became fully, fully alive. My heart and passion for helping others overflowed. I dreamt of building a facility in nature with horse-assisted therapy and holistic care. I looked for properties even. I shared my passionate ideas with my family, my friends, my psychologist. My psychologist even bought me a goals journal for me to start jotting down my plans. Needless to say, I didn't know a thing about buying a property or building a hospital or finding funds, but I did what I could. I studied, I gained a nursing degree, and additional postgraduate specialisations. I worked and gained years of experience in a paediatric ward, nursing adolescents with eating disorders. I co-authored a university level textbook, helping to educate clinicians on eating disorders and mental health. I became a mum, I learnt to nurture a family, and now I've become the nurse unit manager here at Wandi Narita. Australia's first residential eating disorder facility. I could not possibly tell you how excited my heart feels to have the opportunity to be such an intrinsic part of the lives of those living and recovering from eating disorders.